Hello, I am Seamus Dunahu of Eve University, and this is my playthrough of Chapter 3 of the Sisters of Eve Level 1 Epic Arc, The Bloodstained Stars. Uh, at the very least, whenever you log in, get into the habit of checking your skills and your med clone coverage. I have 359,000 skill points. Clone covers 900,000. So, I accepted the agent to come here to Harakani. And I am going to talk to Imori Asaka, the Epic Arc Agent. Alright, scout out the Joan Hive and report back on friendly vessels. Accept. Close. Undock. Warp drive active. Oh look, an acceleration gate. Haven't seen one of these recently. I think for this mission you need to get a little bit closer to those rogue drones. something here. Uh, let me try this. Save location, safe spot. I should have saved the acceleration gate as a safe spot. Doesn't matter. Arriving out of warp, it becomes immediately clear that whoever ha is handling security has little idea how to fight drones. Battleships patrol on the fringe of the swarm, seemingly oblivious to just how vulnerable they are without proper support from smaller vessels. So this hints at a concept that is actually a thing in EVE Online. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Remember when I was orbiting that cruiser? So turrets expect a particular size of target, and if the target is larger or smaller than expected, then it either helps or hurts the effective Locking tracking question. speed of the guns. Missiles have a similar concept. Hold on. Let me get on the next mission before I continue flapping my jaw. Alright, we need to set it. We're picking up something from someplace else and bringing it back to Hatakani. So, remember, set destination Shayland, add waypoint Hatakani. Let's accept. And close and undock. So yeah, showing info on my guns, I have a tracking speed, and I have a signature resolution. So against a target that's 40 meters in signature radius, my guns will have a one-half chance to hit them at optimal range, as long as I'm keeping the angular velocity at 346.5 milliradians per second, or 0 0.3465 radians per second. But if the target is bigger than the guns expect, uh, like say it was that cruiser from the last chapter, uh, that cruiser is probably around 120 meters signature radius. So 120 divided by 40 is a factor of 3. So my real tracking speed against a cruiser is not 346.5 uh, milliradians per second. It's something closer to 900 or 1000 milliradians per second. Uh, similarly, if the target were smaller than my guns expected, if for some reason I were shooting at a target that was only 20 meters in signature radius, well, 20 divided by 40 is one half. 
So instead of needing to keep it below 346 milliradians per second, I need to keep it below, oh, 170 milliradians per second or so. 173 and a quarter, maybe. Something like that. Well, Missiles have a similar concept. Uh, so if I show info, that is showing info on the launcher. I need to show info on a charge. Let me show info on the rocket as actually fit to my ship, because that will take my current skills into account. If any of them apply, I don't have a whole lot of skills. So missiles have an explosion radius and an explosion velocity. The explosion radius is not to be confused with an area of effect radius. Rockets cannot hit more than one target at a time, even if they're hugging each other real tight. Explosion radius is an abstract concept of how big a target the rocket is, or, or how small a target the rocket is expecting. And if the target is bigger than 20 meters signature radius, fine, all well and good. Um, if the target is smaller than 20 meters signature radius, it's going to take diluted damage. Uh, let me come up with a better example here. My destroyer is 66 meters signature radius. So if we look... Why is the market... Okay. Ammunition charges, missiles... Let's say torpedoes. Torpedoes are short-range, battleship-sized missiles. Let's suppose somebody started smacking me around with Nova torpedoes. So, the explosion radius on a Nova torpedo... Doc. The explosion radius on a Nova torpedo is 450 meters. My ship is only 66 meters in signature radius. Drive 66 divided by 450, that's 14.6%. I will not take more than 14.6% of the damage from a torpedo. And this is before resistances come into play. Uh, so, for example, if, my she if it's trying to smack around my shields, I'm 50% resistant to explosive damage on the shield layer. So out of 450, uh, I'm not going to take more than 225. And then we've got this 14.6% um, factor. So out of 225, take, ex um, take resistances, take the signature radius into account. I'm not going to take more than 33 explosive damage from a Nova torpedo, despite the fact that the market uh, attributes, say, 450. So that's resistances, and that's the signature radius. This is assuming my ship is sitting still. Missiles also have a property called the explosion velocity, uh, which for a Nova torpedo is 71 meters per second. Yeah, if I'm moving less than 71 meters per second, I'll only take 33 hit points of damage on the shield layer. If I'm moving faster than 71 meters per second, I'll take even less damage than that. So it'll be less than 33 damage per torpedo that smacks into my ship. So bigger is not always better. Ideally, you want to use battleship weaponry against battleship-sized targets. Cruiser-sized weaponry against cruiser-sized targets. Frigate-sized weaponry against frigate-sized targets. If you try to use oversized weaponry, the damage is going to be diluted for missiles, uh, or it's going to be a lot more likely to miss for turrets. If you can somehow catch uh, a small target uh, sitting still, uh, then you can apply the full damage from a battleship-sized turret against a frigate-sized target. So frig frigate-sized targets that are stationary uh, will die rather quickly to large guns, but not necessarily the large missiles. If you try to use undersized weaponry, uh, they will apply their full damage. Turrets will be more likely to hit larger targets. Uh, missiles will not have their di damage diluted because of size. However, okay. we're still talking about small weaponry okay. smacking around a large hit point pool, so it will take a while. 
Assuming, of course, that this large target is not repairing itself fast enough that it's just constantly negating the damage that you do. In other words, you're not overwhelming the target's uh, self-repair capability. So let's request the next mission. Uh, kill the mercenaries protecting the Garista's facility. So let's accept and close. Because there's a more competent commander who can deal with this rogue drone threat. But he's currently busy dealing with Garista pirates. Go kill the Garista pirates, please. Agent missions, mercenary distractions, warp to location. Uh, I am currently, I've currently got Scourge rockets and Phase Plasma ammunition loaded. So, kinetic and thermal kinetic. Again, Serpentis and Garistas, uh, you generally want to do some mix of kinetic and thermal damage, uh, and either Hornets or Hobgoblins will be fine. Come to think of it, I should probably... I'll have to take a look at the calculations again, but I think I would probably use um, Hornets for both Serpentis and Garistas. And let's close the distance with the Micro Warp Drive. Cut the micro warp drive. And full stop. All right, pull drones. Let's warp back to our cuddle mark. Again, keep in mind, um, I created this bookmark manually by first warping to the station at zero, then manually flying to this spot just above the middle of the station, and going to People and Places, and clicking the Add Location button, and typing in a name. The game does not create these Docking automatically for you. All right, deliver the farming supplies to the storage warehouse. Uh, let's remember, keep your item hanger scrolled to the bottom, then click accept, and there are the farming supplies. Drag those in. You will need 150 cubic meters. So some frigates can't carry this. So let's undock. All right, an economy under threat, and warp to location. Warp drive active. And you need your cargo hold open for this one because you need to drag farming supplies over to a container. By the way, despite the storyline, the game is not using the exact same spot in space as last time. Uh, so, despite the fact that you think you've been here before, you want to right-click something and save it as a separate safe spot, because it's actually a different place in the solar system. Whenever the game creates an encounter for a mission, it always creates the counter the encounter in a new random location somewhere within 20 astronomical units of the local star. All right, the Kaldari forces look better prepared this time around. Anti-support frigates and cruisers flank their larger allies, standing ready and able to deal with any smaller hostiles that come their way. If these drones try to escape, 
Uh, the faster and more agile ones won't slip past the amassed fleet so easily now. Of course, in reality, anything that wants to escape from a dead space just simply has to warp out to someplace outside the dead space. Alright, the mission is complete. Let's warp back to the station. Warp drive active. And I bumped into something, so I got to align again. All right, there we go. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. And again, I used my keyboard hotkey to dock with the station. mission. Alright, neutralize every drone inside the quarantine area. And just to prove the point that the mission spaces are randomly generated, if you right-click and warp to one of your safe spots... Because you recorded a location in space for one of these quarantine areas, you'll find that there's nothing there anymore. Oh, you know what? Uh, if I'm gonna fight rogue drones, I want EMP and I want Mjolnir. But yeah, we're at a safe spot the safe spot we recorded earlier, and there's nothing here. Every drone inside encounter dead space warped location. It is now over 16 astronomical units away. Things are kind of slippery in space. They might move around 16 astronomical units in a few minutes. For those of you who actually know a little bit of real-world physics, you know how absurd that statement is, because it's much moving much faster than light. Warp drive active. All right. There are the rogue drones over 100 kilometers away. I have to get within 30 kilometers to tell my drones to attack anything, and my high slot weaponry isn't going to hit anything, uh, or is not likely to hit anything beyond 4 kilometers. So yeah, it's figure 4 kilometers for the missiles and 5 kilometers for the guns. Given that this is 100 kilometers, it's a good thing I have a micro warp drive so I can move at 1.3 kilometers per second. With an afterburner only, uh, I would only move at half a kilometer per second. Again, keep in mind, with the micro warp drive running, I'm not a 66 meter destroyer. I'm the size of a battleship. So I will take battleship levels of damage from battleship sized weaponry. Thankfully, none of these things are battleships. I can't take battleship size levels of damage if I don't have battleship size weapons being pointed at me. So, again, I am using keyboard 
hotkeys for a lot of this. F1 and F2 uh, for controlling my high slot weaponry, and F9 for sending my drones to attack. Incidentally, I also use a Razer Naga gaming mouse, and I've mapped one of the thumb grid buttons uh, to be F9. happen to be neatly clustered around me, so rather than bookmark a wreck, I will bookmark this spot. Alright, let's return to station. And I believe this will conclude chapter 3, so as usual, I am going to stop recording, uh, switch to a salvaging fit, and clean up these wrecks off-camera. Uh, and when episode 4 starts, I will be back in Arnon. Hold down D, click the station. Let go D. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right, complete the mission. Request the next mission, and yes, indeed, that concludes Chapter 3. So I'm going to stop recording, and when we begin Chapter 4, I will already be in Narnon, ready to talk to Sister Alatura again. In the meantime, thank you for watching.